Hello and welcome to Victoria Planet. My name's John Finch. Last week we looked at Barry Thornton's metal based two bath developer. It's a really good developer and I recommend it to everybody. But sometimes you need a developer that's sharper than that, much sharper than that. And Barry Thornton also released the formula to a high acuteness two bath developer based on pyrocatechin as a developing agent. This in fact formed the basis of Barry Thornton's later developers that he sold commercially, the Dizactol range and others. They're all super sharp developers. So I'd like to show you this as the basis of a developer for you when you need sharpness above all else. Let's take a look. So this Thornton 2 bath is not based on metal. It's based on catechol or pyrocatechin is another way of saying this chemical name. It is a staining developer and it's a true divided developer in so much as bath A, which comprises of catechol, sodium sulfite and potassium bromide, these three chemicals, does not develop the film. It just soaks into the emulsion. And it's when it gets into bath B, which is made up of potassium hydroxide, together with a little bit of potassium bromide, that the development happens. So bath A is a divide, part of a divided developer, which means it doesn't do any of the development. It just soaks into the film. This was the basis of his later developers, such as Dizactol and Dizactol Ultra, which were superb developers. There's no doubt about it. They're some of the very best developers I've ever used. This is not the same formula as them. Those formulas are trade secrets. But this formula was released and is the basis of those later developers. It is super sharp, but it does compress the mid-tones. Unlike Dizactol and Dizactol Ultra, which was a huge tonal range, super sharp, fantastic developer. This one does compress the tonal range in the mid-tones. It's similar to Butler, which does the same thing in that that compresses the mid-tones as well. And FX1 and FX2. All of these high acuteness developers are focused on, excuse the pun, focused on sharpness rather than full wide tonal range. Now you might think to yourself, well, I don't care about that. I, I, I want tonal range, but there are situations where sharpness is fantastic in a photograph and I'm hoping to show you one later. So what is the formula? Well, it's in my book, but it's 10 grams of catechol and two grams of sodium sulfite and half a gram, 0 0.5 grams of potassium bromide. And that's in the A bath. And you make that in 80 milliliters of warm water and then make it up to 100 milliliters. For the B bath, I use 80 milliliters of cold water. And I have to underline that you should use very cold water for the B bath when you're dissolving potassium hydroxide. Add 10 grams of potassium hydroxide slowly to that cold water, stirring all the time. It will warm up, but it won't boil. It won't get too hot. And finally, add 0 0.5 grams again of this potassium bromide. That is the bee bath. Now, this is not unsafe, this chemical. You just have to treat it with care. Potassium hydroxide is similar to sodium hydroxide. It does an, have an exothermic reaction when you add it to water, so it heats the water up. And if you, if you dissolve it too quickly or too much in too small an amount of water, it will boil that water. So always make sure you're using cold water. Start with 80 milliliters and slowly add the 10 grams of potassium hydroxide. You will be fine. Stir gently. It will dissolve quite quickly. So that's your A and your B baths. Let's talk about how you develop with these two baths with this Thornton Pyro two bath developer. We have an A and a B bath for this developer and we dilute the concentrates I've just talked about one plus 14 with both the A and the B. So basically 20 milliliters of concentrate to 280 milliliters of water for the A and the same 
for the bee. You keep them separate. You don't want to cross contaminate these two at all. Also, because it's a staining developer using catechol as its main developing agent, we use a water stop bath that's recommended rather than a acid stop bath. But if you need to use an acid stop bath for some reason, then use it at half strength. Don't use it at full strength. And the reason for that is to try your best to maintain the stain on the negative as much as possible. The stain is beneficial. We want that stain. We, an acid environment will reduce the stain. So try to keep it away from acids if you can. And I'm going to use an alkaline fix. You really want to try and keep your process alkaline if you can. So keep the stop bath as a straight water stop and an alkaline fix uh, to keep and maximize the stain. I show in an earlier video how to make an alkaline fix. So 20 mils to 280 mils of water, 20 degrees centigrade. I use Ilford agitation, which means I add the A bath to my developing tank. I agitate for the first 30 seconds and then I'll agitate for five seconds every further 30 seconds. And I do that for four minutes in the A bath. Empty the A bath out, you can't reuse it. And, and then you add the B bath straight in, no rinsing in between. You put the B bath straight in and agitate for the first 10 seconds, which for me is three good agitations and then sit it down and leave it for 30 seconds. And every 30 seconds, give it another two inversions. It's very simple, four minutes. So four minutes in A, four minutes in B. At the end of that, you'll have beautifully stained, sharp negatives. Let's take a look at some I did earlier. So here are the negatives I developed earlier. As you can see, the bottom negatives are stained. The top negative is from last week's metal base two bath. I wanted to show you the difference between these stain negatives compared to a regular negative. It's a beautiful brown stain that the pyrocatechin leaves behind, and that is beneficial. It helps to control the highlights of our subjects. This one last week is also slightly contrastier, if I can say the word. And that is a little bit misleading to the eye. It looks contrastier, but because of the stain, these negatives actually hold a lot of contrast. And these will print at grade two to two and a half beautifully. So you don't need to see as much contrast. If you're using a staining developer and you find your negatives look a little thin and a little lacking in contrast, they're probably actually just right. If they're like this, quite strongly contrasty, then they're too much and you want to reduce your development a little. So that's what the negatives look like. Let's actually see what they're like when I scan them in. So I've scanned in some of those negatives from the Thornton Pyro 2 bath. They look really nice. Um, they're definitely sharp. Um, let me have a look. Let's zoom in here and have a look what they've got to offer us. So as we look at this, first thing you might notice is that there's grain. There's going to be grain with a catechin two bath developer. After all, that's his only developing agent. So he hasn't tried to mitigate the grain in any way. So this is, if you like, a little bit like Rodinol uh, in the honest grain it's showing us. But as you can see, it is very sharp. It's a lovely developer. There's a little compression in the mid-tones. It's not as detailed, the mid-tones, as I would like in all my developers. But if I'm using this developer, I'm not wanting mid-tones per se. I'm wanting sharpness. Let's look at the next. This is another shot. I went down to Fintorn and took these photographs uh, by the beach. Let's zoom into this building here. Again, I can see the grain but I can also see the sharpness. And I wanted to show you an example of the Mackie lines that this developer creates, the acutance lines between contrast boundaries. And here's an example of it. And if you see these in your photographs, you'll know what they are. 
there is a light line. Can you see that very light line running along the top of this roof against the sky? It's only a pixel or two wide, but that is an acutance line. And that is what this developer gives you, which makes the roof in this case look sharper than it really is. And zoom out. You can see it's a sharp developer and I haven't touched these photographs up. Let's have a look at the next one. Let's have a look here and zoom in. Again, there's the grain, it's obvious, but in a photograph that's normally enlarged, you're not really going to notice it very much. If you look on each side of this drain pipe, you'll see the Mackey lines, making it almost stand out like three-dimensionally against that wall. This is what this developer does very well. Let's look at the next negative. So here's my motorcycle, and in fact I used this photograph in the book that I released last year, and we can see how sharp this is. Now that is beautifully rendered. I haven't seen a photograph of this engine as well rendered as this developer provides. This is a situation where you really can reach for this pyro two bath and get some fantastic photographs. This is so sharp. Let's zoom into this area here by the engine. And you can see, look at that. You can see the writing on these screws. That is amazingly sharp. Everything stands out almost with three-dimensional relief in this photograph. You can see the frame and engine numbers here. Excellent. Excellent developer. And this is the kind of photograph where it really stands head and shoulders above other accountants developers. And there's something very special about Pyro Katachal as a developing agent. Let's do a print and see what this looks like on paper. And here is the finished print from a 35 millimeter camera with a standard 50 millimeter lens and it's exquisitely detailed, sharp as a pen. You can't see any grain. This is round about an eight by eight inch enlargement of the negative. Um, I always do square prints, I like square. It's my, my preference, but it's just beautiful. This is the quality you can get from a very good acutance developer. And Thornton's Pyro 2 Bath is an excellent acutance developer. I think there's maybe only one or two developers that's sharper than this. His later Dizactol range was sharper and had better tonal response. So that was a cracking good developer that was. And Butler gives this kind of sharpness if used as a 2 Bath. And sometimes I get this out of Rodinal. Beautiful photograph. I hope that that was helpful to you guys and you can see why you would use a Acutance 2 bath like this. Please give me a thumbs up uh, to like the video and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. Um, there's so many of you that watch my videos and you don't subscribe. So please hit the subscribe button and the little bell so that you'll be notified when any of my videos come up. And I will see you next week.